Hello everybody, nice to talk with you again. This is Dr. Safan Al-Safi. Uh, I have another presentation today. I hope you like it. And the title of this presentation, what is the best vegetarian source of Omega Complete? And you know Omega Complete means Omega-3, Omega-6, and Omega-9. So the simple question for the, uh, the, the simple answer for this question, perilla oil. And I will discuss with you why perilla oil is the best vegetarian source for omega free fatty acid, omega-3, omega-6, omega-9, Okay, we will discuss this uh, shortly. So, first of all, perilla oil is a vegetarian source, as I just mentioned, for omega free fatty acids, including omega 3, omega 6, and omega 9 free fatty acids. Now, omega 3. Uh, are polyunsaturated fatty acids okay it's not one uh, acid okay we will talk about the details so omega-3 uh, fatty acid include a three ingredients EPA DHA and a L A. So these are the free fatty acids of omega three. Now, what's EPA? EPA is eucosa pantanoic acid. Eucosa pantanoic acid. Okay, and DHA is ducosa hexanoic acid, and A L A is alpha linolenic acid alpha linolenic acid now the epa and dha which are omega-3 are usually found or obtained from seafood okay uh, seafood include as you know tuna crab salmon mussels trout oysters and omega-3 supplements omega-3 dietary supplements uh, uh, they contain fish oils and the fish oil contains both dha and epa now on the other hand ala okay is found in vegetable oils like canola oil soy oil and we will see that also uh, perilla oil contains ala also here people who would like who are vegetarian and they don't like any meat source can enjoy omega-3 from the flaxseed oil because it contains ALA and as I just mentioned another uh, uh, source for vegetarian people for the omega-3 is the perilla oil because perilla oil contains ALA now when ALA is taken orally in the body it is metabolized or converted to DHA and EPA and these are the most common free fatty acid of omega-3 and there is a lot of research on DHA and EPA so in other words ALA in vegetarian oil is a precursor 
for DHA and EPA. Now, the health benefits of omega-3 fatty acids are so many. One of them, when you take omega-3 fatty acids, you are decreasing the production of triglyceride in your liver. And as, we, as you know, we always try to decrease the level of triglyceride because triglycerides, when they are high in the blood, they can cause some problems. So we need to decrease the level of triglycerides and minimize the risk of atherosclerosis and heart disease in the future. So there is actually a research article published in 2005 on this issue and they found that both DHA and EPA, it means omega-3, they played significant roles in the secondary prevention of post-MI. So if uh, a patient has already uh, developed myocardial inf uh, infarction and we give the patient omega-3, the DHA and EPA in omega-3 can give him or give the patient the protection against another attack of MI or myocardial infarction. According to the American Heart Association guidelines, uh, they recommend for secondary prevention of post-ST elevation MI, one gram daily of both DHA and EPA as a total. They recommend one gram daily of omega-3 or DHA and EPA to prevent another attack of MI. Uh, also, the European Society of Cardiology, uh, they have the same guidelines as the American uh, Society and also they recommend a daily intake of one gram of DHA and EPA to prevent uh, secondary attacks of MI. Now, we move no next to omega-6. Omega-6 fatty acids, okay, uh, are essential for health and because the body cannot make them and that's why it is classified as an essential fatty acid because you need to take it from food either from fish or from a vegetable oil okay uh, so the sources of omega-6 fatty acid the diet or it can be taken as a dietary supplement. Now the dietary sources of omega-6 include the poultry, the eggs, the avocado, the nuts, the cereals, the whole grain bread and the vegetable oils. Now, also, omega-6 can be obtained as a dietary supplement from perilla oil because perilla oil contains linoleic acid, which is one of the acids of omega-6. So, if we look here at the uh, 
uh, various fatty acids for omega-6 we have linoleic acid which you can get from perilla oil and also you can get uh, gamma linoleic acid this is also considered uh, as omega-6 fatty acid in addition to kalindic acid okay uh, other acids for omega-6 include eucosa sadunoic acid and also we have dihomo gamma linolenic acid or they call it DGLA okay in addition to arachidonic acid arachidonic acid okay so here you have to be careful we need omega-6 because it's an essential uh, free fatty acid your body cannot form it however we need appropriate amount because excessive amount of omega-6 may induce inflammation and may cause damage to your vital organs so you have to make sure that the uh, supplement you are taking contains the appropriate amount of omega-6 and we will go into further details about this issue uh, soon now also omega-6 fatty acid uh, include uh, tetra cosa tetranoic acid and tetra cosa pentanoic acid uh, in addition to glucosa, dinoic acid, adrenic acid, glucosa, pentanoic acid. You see, there are so many uh, kinds. Okay, now let's come to linoleic acid, which is found in perilla oil as omega 6 a free fatty acid. This acid is converted in the body to GLA. Okay, and then the GLA is converted further to DGLA. Okay, now GLA can reduce inflammation. GLA can reduce inflammation. It has anti-inflammatory effects. Okay. And the DGLA, the DGLA can fight inflammation. So the GLA can minimize or reduce inflammation, and the DGLA can fight inflammation. Now, the conversion of GLA to DGLA is usually enhanced or stimulated by magnesium by zinc by vitamin c by vitamin b3 and by vitamin b6 okay again we come to the health benefits of omega-6 omega-6 is beneficial in the appropriate quantities but could be harmful in excessive amounts in the appropriate quantities omega-6 free fatty acids are essential for a normal brain function for healthy brain function also these acids are very important to achieve normal growth and normal development especially for children omega-6 free fatty acid can also maintain our skin healthy and also omega-6 free fatty acid can stimulate hair growth 
and this is uh, actually important uh, for people who have uh, hair loss who have alopecia for both males and females may benefit from omega-6 and another important function for omega-6 it can regulate the metabolic processes in the body and it can also maintain the reproductive system healthy and active uh, omega-6 uh, free fatty acid could possibly be effective for the management of diabetic neuropathy and also it could be possibly effective for the treatment of rheumatoid arthritis and also people who have uh, various kinds of allergies may benefit from omega-6 free fatty acids also omega-6 free fatty acid could be effective for the treatment of a variety of medical condition like ADHD, uh, eczema, and hypertension. And also, it could be effective for menopausal symptoms, for breast pain, and for multiple sclerosis. Also, uh, it could be beneficial for patients suffering from osteoporosis, PMS and diabetes mellitus. Okay, now we move to the third oil, omega-9 free fatty acids. Omega-9 free fatty acids are non-essential fatty acid. What does that mean? Non-essential, it means your body can make them from unsaturated fat. So the body can make omega-9 free fatty acid, but your body is unable to make omega-6. So omega-6 is essential, omega-9 is non-essential, because your body can produce omega-9 free fatty acid from unsaturated fat. So also we have a variety of uh, fatty acid in omega-9 like oleic acid, elaidic acid, gondolic acid, narvonic acid, med acid, uh, erosic acid. However, the most important a free fatty acids for omega-9 are oleic acid and erucic acid. So oleic acid is usually obtained from olive oil, macadamia oil, and also from monosaturated fats. Erucic acid can be obtained from rapeseed, from wallflower seed, and from mustard seed. Also, you can get oleic acid from perilla oil. So if you, use, if you use perilla oil as dietary supplement, it will give you oleic acid as a source of omega-9. Now, what are the health benefits of omega-9 free fatty acid. As you can see, omega-9 free fatty acids have so many, I'm sorry, uh, uh, these fatty acids, they have so many health benefits, including uh, lowering the levels of cholesterol, uh, they can control inflammation and they can boost the immune system and possibly they may prevent cancer. Now, when we come 
to perilla oil uh, and this is actually the title of our presentation what is the best vegetarian source of omega complete as you can see perilla oil is a balanced formula of omega-3 omega-6 and omega-9 free fatty acids the most important thing about perilla oil it contains the highest level of omega-3 fatty acids and actually this is what we need the highest level of omega-3 also omega perilla oil contains the lowest level of omega-9 free fatty acid because omega-9 is not essential your body can uh, produce omega-9 and the most important thing it contains an intermediate amount of omega-6 free fatty acid we don't need excessive amount of omega-6 we need excessive amount of omega-3 but appropriate amount of omega-6 and this is actually a photo for the perilla oil from the seeds from which perilla oil is obtained and perilla oil is considered an omega complete dietary supplement Be complete it means you have the three kinds of omega omega-3 omega-6 and omega-9 the main advantages of perilla oil it doesn't have a fishy smell so many people they don't like the fishy smell so this is uh, actually an advantage for perilla oil also it doesn't have a fishy taste it doesn't cause gastrointestinal upset and the most important thing it is not contaminated with heavy metals because as we hear nowadays uh, the seafood could be contaminated with heavy metals so here you make sure that you are not exposing yourself to the risk of uh, harmful heavy metals also perilla oil is safe for people who suffer from fish allergy and they cannot eat fish or seafood they can enjoy perilla oil and get the omega uh, free fatty acid from this oil now the advantages of perilla oil because it contains uh, the three kinds of uh, omega omega-3 omega-6 and omega-9 uh, and there are so many research uh, actually going on on this uh, oil uh, possibly this can enhance the brain function and also it may promote growth and development it may reduce the risks of stroke and heart disease and also it may decrease the bad uh, the bad cholesterol levels it means it may decrease the ldl cholesterol low density lipoprotein cholesterol this is we call it the bad cholesterol which can increase the risk of atherosclerosis and later on heart disease and possibly stroke another important thing for perilla oil it may boost your immune system and give you protections against the infections and also against cancer so because it's an immune booster Perilla oil can minimize the risk of infection. Okay, now we come to uh, our uh, question Can omega 6 fatty acids cause heart disease? And actually, here the question If 
uh, omega-6 is taken in excessive amount or in other words if the supplement you are taking you are taking contains uh, uh, omega-6 more than omega-3 okay so in the body both omega-6 and omega-3 fatty acids are incorporated in the cell membranes uh, inducing various responses various responses include modulation of the membrane protein function uh, cellular signaling and gene expression omega-3 and omega-6 free fatty acid compete with each other to be incorporated into the cell membrane so as you can see here in this diagram when we talk about omega-6 and which is found in vegetable oils margarine nuts seeds grains conventional meats and also in perilla oil uh, here we have lino, uh, linolic acid and the linolic acid compete for the same converting enzyme of uh, alpha linolic acid of omega-3 and linolic acid will be converted into gamma linolenic acid and then the gamma linolenic acid is converted to arachidonic acid and uh, the arachidonic acid is uh, classified as a pro-inflammatory mediators that may cause inflammation now when we come to omega-3 we see that we have the omega-3 in the fish like salmon tuna sar mercurial flaxseed oil chia seeds in addition to perilla oil we have alpha linolenic acid it is converted to EPA and the EPA is then converted to DHA and both the EPA and the DHA have anti-inflammatory effects they fight inflammation now some studies confirmed that excessive omega-6 fatty acid could lead to the formation of metabolites that can induce inflammation particularly arachidonic acid now if omega-6 free fatty acids a predominate in the cell membrane okay pro-inflammatory mediators could be released and they can start the process of inflammation and inflammation can cause damage in our body now the pro-inflammatory mediators include thromboxanes leukotrienes, uh, certain kinds of prostaglandins, okay? However, if omega-3 fatty acid uh, predominate in the cell membrane, anti-inflammatory mediators are released and they have anti-inflammatory effects. They improve inflammatory conditions now the anti-inflammatory mediators of omega-3 include prostaglandins and less potent leukotrienes and again this diagram may explain to you what happens so in the omega-6 pathway metabolism the uh, la linoleic acid 
is converted to GLA and then the uh, GLA is converted to DGLA and then DHLA will be converted to arachidonic acid and also here the arachidonic acid is further metabolized to inflammatory mediators including uh, prostaglandin I2, uh, prostaglandin E2 and thromboxane A2. Also, some of the DHLA uh, could be metabolized to prostaglandin E1, and prostaglandin E1 has anti-inflammatory effect. Now we come to the omega-3 metabolic pathway. The A ALA is converted to EPA, and the EPA is a precursor for anti-inflammatory mediators, including prostaglandin I3, prostaglandin E3, and thromboxane A3. Okay, again, uh, these mediators have anti-inflammatory effects. So when there is inflammation, possibly there will be damage in the lining of arteries and this could increase the risk of cardiovascular disorders. According to the American Heart Association, uh, they, they check the evidence about the omega-3 and omega-6 and the ratio and they recommended that if omega-6 free fatty acids constitute between 5 to 10 percent of the total daily calories that will be safe. You don't have to worry. You don't have to worry of inflammation and uh, tissue or organ damage if you are taking uh, between 5 to 10 percent of your total daily calories as omega-6. Other studies okay confirmed uh, that the ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 fatty acid the lower the ratio the better it means the less amount of omega-6 and the higher amount of omega-3 that will be the better for your health the acceptable ratio according to these studies of omega-6 to omega-3 fatty acid is a maximum 3 to 1 and if the ratio is greater than 3 to 1 there will be a risk of inflammation now when we come to perilla oil, the ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 in perilla oil is 1 to 5. And actually, this is the lowest ratio so far in vegetable oils. Uh, the other oils, as you can see, like flaxseed oil, uh, the ratio is a little bit higher one to three but still it's excellent and it is available as a, a dietary supplement for a vegetarian to get their omega complete but perilla oil is better uh, now when we move to other oils you can see that the ratio is getting higher and higher it means they will possibly uh, release pro-inflammatory mediators and then you will end up with inflammation so you can see walnut 5 to 1 soybean 7 to 1 olive oil 11 to 1 and sunflower oil 19 to 1 and when you come at the bottom of the table cottonseed oil is the worst because the amount of omega-3 is negligible compared 
to the excessive amount of omega-6. Now, the main conclusion is that perilla oil contains the highest level of omega-3 fatty acid compared to other vegetable oils. And perilla oil also possesses the best ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 fatty acid compared to other vegetable oils. There are some studies on perilla oil and this study was published in 2011. They concluded that in comparing to other plant oils, perilla seed oil consistently contains the one of the highest proportion of omega-3 between brackets ALA fatty acid at a percentage between 54 to 64. Also uh, they concluded that these polyunsaturated fatty acids are most beneficial to human health in prevention of different diseases, sorry, <clears throat> uh, like cardiovascular diseases, cancer, inflammatory, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, etc. Now, omega complete and ADHD, attention defi deficient hyperactivity disorders, and here there is actually a study. Do omega-3-6 fatty acids have a therapeutic role in children and young people who suffer from ADHD? And this was published in 2017. And they concluded that ADHD is a frequent and debilitating childhood condition. Given disparaging feelings toward psychostimulant medications, omega-3-6 fatty acids offer a great promise as a suitable adjunctive therapy for ADHD. As you know, these children uh, uh, must take the stimulants and the stimulants have so many side effects. So uh, taking uh, a supplement of omega uh, complete uh, could benefit them, could help them with the medication they are taking. Another study, omega-3 fatty acid supplementation for the treatment of children with attention deficient hyperactivity disorders, symptomology, and this is actually a systematic uh, review and meta-analysis that was published in 2011. And they concluded that omega-3 fatty acid supplementation, particularly with high doses of EPA, was modestly effective in the treatment of ADHD. Also, they concluded that the relative efficacy of omega-3 fatty acid supplementation was modest compared to currently available pharmacotherapies for ADHD such as psychostimulant or a tamoxetine or alpha-2 agonist which are commonly used for patients with ADHD. However, given its relatively benign side effect profile and evidence of modest efficacy, it may be reasonable to use omega-3 fatty acid supplementation to augment traditional pharmacological intervention or for families who decline other psychopharmacological options. Uh, some parents refuse to give the psychostimulant to their children, so at least 
uh, they have an alternative, although here they are talking about modus efficacy, but still they benefit, and the greatest benefit will be if the child takes omega complete with the medication uh, he or she is using for the treatment of their ADHD. Uh, another study published in 2016, and they concluded there is evidence that omega-3 polyunsaturated fatty acid treatment has a positive effect on ADHD. And also they concluded it should be added that the treatment could be more effective in patients with mild forms of ADHD. And also they concluded, moreover, the dosage of stimulant medication could be reduced when used in combination with omega-3 polyunsaturated fatty acid supplement. And actually this is very interesting. Uh, when children start to use the omega uh, fatty acids with their medication, maybe uh, sooner or later, the doctor can decrease the doses of the psychostimulant or other medication. And okay, okay, when you reduce the dose, it means you are also reducing the side effect of the medications. Now, the conclusion continues here. Further studies are necessary to investigate the underlying mechanism that can lead to a reduction of ADHD symptoms due to omega-3 polyunsaturated fatty acid treatment and also to determine the optimal concentration of omega-3 PUFA, whether used as single treatment or in combination with other medication. So I think we need a lot of research, research on this issue, okay? But I would say that as a dietary supplement, I would recommend uh, perilla oil for every child with ADHD, okay? Because the uh, perilla oil will not benefit the ADHD alone, but it will benefit the general health of the child, especially the cognitive function, their performance at school, and this is very important for our children. Another study published in 2018 concluded that, in summary, there is evidence that N3 polyunsaturated fatty acid supplementation, meaning omega-3, uh, monotherapy improves clinical symptoms and cognitive performances in children and adolescents with ADHD and that these youth have a deficiency in the omega-3 levels. Also, they concluded our findings provide further support to the rationale for using omega-3 as a treatment option for ADHD. Now, the bottom line, okay, perilla oil is the best vegetarian source of omega-free fatty acid. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day.